Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Brazil was hit by an awful earthquake. Then there was a strange sound. What occurred, is that the wrath of God or a sign of the end times. In this episode, we will explain in more detail. Smash the thumbs up button for me, leave me a comment down below, and share this. Let's get started. When an earthquake occurs, strong shaking makes everything vibrate and shake. Buildings shook, streets seemed to be caught in a giant wave, and a feeling of insecurity spread everywhere. The larger the earthquake, the more severe the consequences, and in Brazil, it has caused immeasurable damage. In large cities such as Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro, high-rise buildings and sturdy infrastructure have suffered heavy destruction. Powerful buildings were destroyed or suffered heavy losses, causing thousands of people to lose their homes and shelters. However, the destruction is not limited to urban areas. In rural lands and jungles, wooden houses and small communities also endured staggering consequences from the earthquake. These people often lived close to nature and did not have strong infrastructure to withstand natural forces. Besides urban areas, rural areas also did not escape the devastation of the earthquake. Wooden houses and farms were heavily destroyed, creating heartbreaking images of loss and despair. The small winding roads among the lush green forests are now silent and deserted, leaving only traces of destruction with fallen tree branches and piles of rubble. The local people walk the streets as if walking slowly in pain and loss. They are trying to pick up the pieces of their lives but are still filled with anxiety and uncertainty about the future. Some people looked at the ruined buildings with empty eyes, but their hearts were still full of hope for a brighter tomorrow. The consequences of the earthquake in Brazil devastated not only infrastructure and property but also severely affected the community and the economy. Loss of home, personal property, and colleagues causes insecurity and instability in the daily lives of millions of people. Local industries suffered losses that were not immediately recoverable, reducing income and employment for the community. Despite great challenges, solidarity and cooperation both within and beyond the community can create hope and strength to help in the reconstruction and recovery process. Fear in a strange They observed as the flies settled upon every available surface, from buildings to trees to street signs, seemingly indifferent to the chaos and destruction wrought by the earthquake. Despite their overwhelming numbers, the flies appeared harmless, exhibiting no aggressive behavior towards humans or animals. Yet their presence added another layer of surrealism to the already surreal aftermath of the earthquake. Against the backdrop of crumbling infrastructure and displaced communities, the sight of these ethereal insects lent an eerie sense of otherworldliness to the scene. Scientists and entomologists scrambled to understand the origins and behavior of these mysterious flocks. Some speculated that they were drawn to the city by changes in atmospheric conditions or disruptions in their natural habitats caused by the earthquake. Others theorized that they may have been inadvertently transported to the city by strong winds or atmospheric currents. The strange appearance of these flies was also mentioned in the UK. In the UK, there are many cluster flies. They seem harmless, but don't you think this is strange? After the earthquake, strange flies suddenly appeared. If you pay a little attention, you will see that this is similar to a Bible verse, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. And in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. The next plague continues the theme of swarming insects after the Pharaoh refused again to let God's people go. God sent a plague of flies throughout Egypt. The whole of Egypt was overrun by these pesky winged insects, except for the land of Goshen, as this is where the Israelites lived. Is this prophecy being fulfilled? 
The uncanny resemblance between the biblical passage from Exodus and the sudden appearance of swarms of flies in Mexico City and beyond inevitably sparked discussions about the potential fulfillment of prophecy. Many individuals, both religious and secular, found themselves pondering the parallels between the events described in the Bible and the contemporary phenomenon unfolding before their eyes. In Exodus 8 verses 21 to 22, God warns the Pharaoh of Egypt that if he does not release the Israelites from bondage, he will send swarms of flies upon the land, sparing only the land of Goshen where the Israelites dwell. The subsequent plague of flies, which afflicted Egypt but spared the land of Goshen, served as a demonstration of God's power and a testament to his protection over his chosen people. As people contemplated the eerie similarities between this biblical narrative and the events occurring in Mexico City and other parts of the world, questions arose about the significance of these parallels. Was this merely a coincidence, or was it possible that history was repeating itself in a remarkable and unexpected way? Some saw the arrival of the swarms of flies as a potential sign or omen, a manifestation of divine intervention or judgment in response to the moral and spiritual state of the world. Others approached the phenomenon from a more skeptical perspective, attributing it to natural or scientific explanations rather than supernatural causes. Regardless of one's interpretation, the convergence of biblical prophecy and contemporary events served as a powerful reminder of the enduring relevance of ancient texts and their capacity to inspire contemplation and reflection in the modern world. Whether viewed through a religious lens or a secular one, the parallels between the biblical plague of flies and the modern-day swarms prompted people to grapple with timeless questions about faith, fate, and the mysteries of the universe. As speculation swirled about the potential fulfillment of prophecy, individuals and communities grappled with the profound implications of the events unfolding before them. Some saw the arrival of the swarms of flies as a sobering reminder of humanity's interconnectedness with the natural world and the consequences of our actions on the environment. They viewed it as a wake-up call to address pressing issues such as climate change, deforestation, and pollution, which threaten the delicate balance of ecosystems worldwide. Others approached the phenomenon with a sense of awe and reverence, interpreting it as a divine message or warning for believers. The parallels between the biblical narrative and the contemporary events raised profound questions about faith, destiny, and the mysteries of the divine. Some saw the arrival of the flies as a call to repentance and spiritual renewal, urging people to heed the lessons of history and align themselves with higher principles of justice, compassion, and righteousness. Yet amidst the speculation and interpretation, there were also those who approached the phenomenon with a sense of scientific inquiry and curiosity. Researchers and scientists sought to understand the ecological and environmental factors driving the sudden appearance of the flies, conducting studies and experiments to unravel the mysteries of their behavior and migration patterns. As the discussion unfolded, the story of the flies became a focal point for dialogue and reflection, sparking conversations about the intersection of religion, science, and the natural world. People from all walks of life found themselves drawn into the debate, grappling with questions about the nature of existence, the limits of human understanding, and the interconnectedness of all living beings. In the end, whether viewed through a religious, scientific, or philosophical lens, the story of the flies served as a potent reminder of the complexity and beauty of the world we inhabit. It prompted people to confront fundamental questions about the nature of reality and our place within it, challenging us to approach life with humility, curiosity, and a sense of wonder. In the face of these global tensions, we are called to be agents of peace, reconciliation, and hope. As the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 12 verse 18, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. May we be known as peacemakers in a world torn apart by strife, pointing others to the Prince of Peace who alone can bring true and lasting shalom. Furthermore, let us be fervent in prayer, interceding for the nations and their leaders, that God would grant them wisdom, restraint, and a desire for peace.
In 1 Timothy 2 verses 1-2, Paul urges us, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. As the threat of World War II looms on the horizon, may we, as the people of God, be faithful in prayer, repentance, and seeking the face of our Heavenly Father, knowing that He alone can bring healing and restoration to our broken and divided world. My friends, as we navigate the perilous waters of wars and rumors of wars in 2024, let us keep our eyes fixed on the eternal kingdom that cannot be shaken. May we find comfort in the words of Jesus in John 16 verse 33, where he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. As the nations rage and the kingdoms tremble, may we stand firm in our faith, anchored in the unshakable promises of God, and may we shine as beacons of hope and peace in a world desperate for the light of Christ. My dear friends, as we have explored these five remarkable things happening in April 2024 and beyond, let us not be overwhelmed by fear or anxiety. Instead, may these signs of the time serve as a clarion call to draw near to God, to fix our eyes on Jesus, and to live each day with a sense of urgency and purpose. Let us be faithful in prayer, fervent in our witness, and unwavering in our hope, knowing that our redemption draws near. As we navigate these challenging times, may we cling to the promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Noah's flood, the year-long global flood in the days of Noah, was the greatest sedimentary and tectonic event in the history of our planet since creation. See Genesis 6 verse 9. One of the primary physical causes of this great judgment was the fountains of the great deep, all of which were broken up on a single day. The verb for broken up in Hebrew means to split or cleave and indicates the fault process. The enormous upheaval, probably associated with faulting of seafloor springs, unleashed a year-long global flood. God's purpose was to begin the human race again from the family of Noah. Destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah a disaster called an overthrow, was delivered in about 2050 BC on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. That event was so spectacular, swift, and complete that it became proverbial for the severity of judgment that God's righteous anger could deliver. Jesus spoke woe exceeding those spoken against Sodom and Gomorrah on Galilean cities that rejected his teaching. The swiftness of Sodom's judgment was used by Jesus to illustrate how sudden his return will be. Of the five cities of the plain, only Zor is described as surviving the catastrophe. Zor is the site to which Lot and his family fled with the approval of the angels. As a city, it flourished through the time of Moses and the kings of Israel, even being described as a city of the region of Moab by the prophets. Arab historians in the Middle Ages refer to Zor and identify the city as modern Safi southeast of the Dead Sea in Jordan. Because Lot and his family made the journey by foot in just a few hours, Sodom must be less than about 20 miles from Zor. Two early Bronze Age archaeological sites southeast of the Dead Sea, Babra and Nera, reveal evidence of catastrophic collapse and burning along the eastern border fault of the Dead Sea Transform Fault. These two sites are likely the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah. After God's voice shakes the earth mightily, high 2, 6 and 7, 21 to 22, Hebrews 12 verse 26, and fully accomplishes these extraordinary geologic changes, his saints will receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.